person, you want to know what kind of, like the Bible says, there's a sin that leads to death, and there's a sin that doesn't lead to death, and you're trying to figure out which one that is so you can commit that. Wait a second. <laughs> here's, here's another thing that's, that keeps us bound up, and this, is, this may be, it just might be, one of the more common ones. It's called reluctance. It is the third peril that prevented some of the res some responding to Christian uh, this is uh, the freedom that, that Christ is offering even us today. That context reveals that some had placed their faith in Christ. Look what it says there in verse thirty. I think it was. It said here that uh, as he spoke these words, many believed in him. Many believed in him, while others believed that Jesus was preaching, but they had not taken that next. step. Step placing their faith in him. The group wasn't arrogant. They aren't ignorant because they recognize a need for a Savior. They recognize a need for Jesus, but they were unwilling to surrender their Lordship to Christ. They were reluctant. I don't know, maybe, maybe you're dealing with that right now. Maybe you're still the master of your own universe. You say, yeah, but I believe in Jesus, so I'm saved. You might be saved. You might be on the way to heaven. But you're miserable right now where you are. And for no reason except you're reluctant. And then there's another reason that we find ourselves bound. Being complacent. See, when we read the text, we find that there's an exhortation to be free indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Whom the sun sets you is it? Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. free indeed. I mean, that's complete freedom. Say that word; it sounds pretty good. Freedom. 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 You see, that exhortation seems to kind of stand in contrast to those who would accept marginal freedom. It's just a little bit of freedom. You know, something that was acceptable instead of trusting Christ for abundant life, it, it's, it, it's acceptable. And, and I learned this principle a long time ago. You know, we live in, God, in a time where we live under God's permissive will. Amen. Well, if, if God didn't want me to do it, if God didn't want me to have it, if God didn't want me to see it, if God did, you know, <coughs> he, he, since he permitted it, it must be okay. Now, I'm going to preach on Ashley for a minute, and then I'll get around to Brittany. Um, <laughs> um, so, Ashley doesn't remember this, so maybe she does. She was pretty little. You know, she's about that tall. And we lived in a house that, uh, you know, it, it had it, it had a, uh, the, the furnace was basically the furnace that heated the whole house. We didn't have ducting. So it was kind of chilly. So it helped knock off the, the, the chill in the house. We had a kerosene heater. <laughs> And I kept shooing her away from it, shooing her away from it, shooing her away. Finally, one day I said, fine, I'm just going to sit here. What? She went over there, and you know what happened? She touched it. She touched it. She, touched it. She, she looked at me, and she screamed, and she had this furious look on her face. <laughs> yeah, kind of like that, but she was only like two. Um, and, you know, and she comes with her little fat finger like this. <laughs> and I, all I can say is, honey, I told you. And we, I carried her to the sink and poured the cold water on her and stuff. And you know what? She never touched that, that again. No doubt. Yeah. No, you touched the coffee cup. What I'm saying here, though, is that there's, there comes a time when we need to be completely free. You can do what you want to do, but sometimes you go too far. Well, how far is too far? Here's one for you. It goes back to reluctance. For him that knows to do good and they don't, what is it? Sin. Christ is offering abundant life. Here we are, back, back, back in the scripture, attending the synagogue, offering sacrifices, and celebrating those traditional holy festivals was okay for most people. But Jesus says it's more to life than that. It's, it's, well, how I many there's more to life than just tradition? There's more, there's more to life than just celebrating the festivals. As a matter of fact, God, in, in one area, you know, you, when you read the Bible, you're going to come across the verses that say, I hate your festivals. What? But we're having a party. 
pray for you, Lord. We would hope, wait, watch this. I'll bring it to where you can understand. We were having a party for you, and we were kind of hoping you'd show up. Well, how many of us would rather accept the cheap prize? Or do you want the big prize? Have you ever been to Chuck E. Cheese? You know what Chuck E. Cheese? Yeah! <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese. Look, let me give you this. Um, I can't remember who told me this story, but it was it, it just came to mind not right now. He had taken his little girl to Chuck E. Cheese. And, uh, you know, you go in there and you play the games and you get the tickets. You win tickets, right? And uh, so she'd gone and, and she won some tickets and he went to the redemption. I like this. The redemption counter. <laughs> she went to be. She went to redeem her tickets, and she gets there, you know, and uh, they look at how many tickets she's got, you know, and he says, you know, he said, you, you you can you can claim your prize from one of these three lower shelves. She was pretty happy with that, you know. She she took her prize and uh, and and, and they, they, you know she went home and she was pretty happy about it. Well, they went back again. And this time she hit the jackpot. She came back, I don't know how many she had, but she goes over and she's got this handful of tickets and uh, the person behind the redemption counter, the redeemer of tickets, I guess, uh, the ticket redeemer. said, you know, you can pick anything you want. And he said, you should have seen her eyes. <laughs> anything? Even that? And she's pointing way up on top to this Big, massive, real life looking duck. I don't know what kind of doll it was. And, and the guy said, Well, yeah, you can have that. So she redeems the ticket. Now they're, they're getting ready to take off and go back home. And uh, she said to her dad, You know what? From now on, I only want to be able to pick from the top shelf. I only want the best prize. See, I'm convinced that those who call themselves Christians live complacent lives and choose blessings from the bottom shelf. Amen. The problem is abundant freedom is available. You are supposed to be living free indeed. And let, let me give you some closing thoughts on all this because first off, freedom is a process. It's not something you get today and then, no way, it's a process. I don't have time to share the history, but I'll tell you this. When the people of Israel were freed from the slavery of Egypt, when they, when they went out and they, they became free, they did not know how to live. They didn't know how to farm for themselves. They didn't know how to fend for themselves. I mean, think that they got to go to battle uh, along the way. Somebody had to te you know, teach them how to fight along the way because they're going to have to take the promised land, all right? They didn't know how to do any of this kind of stuff. They did not know how to live free. And I'm afraid that many of us, we don't know how to live free. You see, Jesus identifies the process for experiencing true freedom with the words, if, then. That process should not be confused with some legalistic formula. I did A, I did B, I did C. No, it's not, it doesn't work out like that. Here's what, we, here's what most of you have reduced the gospel. Listen, you've reduced the gospel to that. I believe, therefore, I'm saved. Believing in Jesus equals salvation. Well, well, wait a minute. You need to define better the properties of what believing in Jesus means. Amen. Multifaceted. You see, he doesn't say if you have a if you have a daily quiet time, 30 minutes of prayer, if you tithe faithfully, and only to Sunday school twice a year, then you can be free. He doesn't say that. <laughs> but he does. Listen, while he doesn't prescribe a formula, his words do reveal a way in which things are to operate within his kingdom. For example, let me give you this. You're to watch the sunrise every morning, but you must do two things to see it. You gotta get up early. And you must face east. Now, by the way, if you're asleep until 10 o'clock and you look to you look to the west, you're going to miss the sunrise even though you were free to watch it. Why? Because there is a way things do work. There are a way things which do work. That little word.